Hello, friends, and welcome back to stories about entitled people. Let's start with a story about why you shouldn't try to run someone over, especially when that someone is simply using a bicycle lane. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. Why you shouldn't try to run a person over. Every morning when I ride to work on my bicycle, I wait on the bike lane at the same cross section to drive through the same park that leads to my work, and every morning I'm faced with the same guy who drives out of his driveway and stands on the bike lane with his car whilst waiting for the light to turn green. This is not because he doesn't know that cars aren't supposed to stand on the bike lane, but simply because he's a jerk with no regard for other people who uses the opportunity to stop his car at the red light near a trash can so he can throw his cigarette stumps out the window and in the vicinity of the trash can. Whilst this behavior is trashy and annoying because it doesn't allow bicycles to pass, it wouldn't be such a big problem if he didn't also take this opportunity to empty his ashtray out the window in windy conditions will blow right into every cyclist's face who waits behind him at the red light. One day, when I drove up to the red light, I saw him standing on the bicycle lane again. I was going to take a couple of steps back so the ashes don't get to me, but there were already cyclists behind me, so I decided instead to squeeze past his car and in front of the red light. In the process of getting there, I accidentally touched his car to keep my balance. I didn't think this was a big deal. Oh boy, was I wrong. As the lights turned green, I started driving to the entrance near the park. But as the car behind me started to accelerate, I heard an engine revving up behind me and tires screeching as the guy drove on the wrong side of the street, overtook the car behind me and cut straight across the street to cut me off just at the entrance of the park. He immediately began rolling down his window and shouting at me. I apologized for touching his car, but told him that I'd not damaged his car in any way and that he wasn't supposed to stand on the bicycle lane in the first place. He kept shouting for a little while, and when I saw that it was pointless to keep listening to him and try to calm him down, I decided to speed off through the park, which he wasn't allowed to go through with his car. Whilst driving through the park, I heard tires screeching all along the way, so I knew what was coming. This time, he decided to cut me off right in a roundabout. I saw the car coming towards me with no sign of slowing down. Thank God I pulled my brakes because just a second after that, the car crashed into a lamppost that I would have been in front of had I not slowed down. I could see the guy screaming through the window that I would pay for this and that I was responsible for the damage as he started to get out of the car. Seeing as he was about a head taller than me and roughly 30 kilograms, 66 pounds heavier, whilst clearly being extremely agitated, I decided at that moment that I had to be somewhere else and promptly drove off through some side streets where he couldn't follow before hiding and calling the cops. I told the cops about everything that had happened and they said they would come by and check it out. I don't know what exactly happened when they checked the driver, but the family sold the car shortly after the incident and I've seen the guy walk ever since. Rumor has it that he wasn't supposed to drive in the first place, although stories range from outstanding tickets to having a history of substance abuse and threatening to hurt people with his car. Ultimately, I'm just happy that I can finally drive to work in peace without getting ashed on every day. This guy sounds like he belongs in the loony bin. Delusional, dangerous, and a bad temper is a hell of a combination. Some people just shouldn't be allowed to drive under any circumstances. Shame he didn't get prison for attempted vehicular assault. And our second story. My dad kicked me out as a teen, but I had the last laugh. When I was 17 years old, I would mostly just play World of Warcraft and do the bare minimum in high school. During my senior year, I had over 20 absences, most involved me skipping to play games. I lived in a rural farmhouse, so internet was expensive and unreliable. This is 2008. We were poor and didn't have internet, but my neighbor did, and unbeknownst to my dad, 46-year-old male, and stepmom, 32-year-old female, I set up a wireless extender, with said neighbor's permission, so I could do homework. It just barely reached my bedroom in the back deck. I'd play games in my room on the internet all the time, and my parents didn't even realize I had internet. They just figured that WOW was another non-internet game, and I didn't enlighten them. As I got close to graduation, I did some self-reflection and decided to give video games up. 
I'd given them up for an entire week and was so proud of myself that I decided to open up to my father and tell him about my progress. I told him that I had had internet for over six months and that it had reached my bedroom. I didn't mention the extender. My dad, 46-year-old male, was not pleased that I'd been playing this many games under his nose. Up until then, he was a fairly absentee parent, but then he wanted to lay down the law and he demanded to take permanent possession of my laptop so he could sell it and presumably cut me off any future gaming. This felt unfair to me because the laptop was a gift from my grandmother and I couldn't afford to replace it. He also wanted to drive me to and from school where I previously had a lot more freedom on a bike. I was almost 18 years old and I felt like I'd taken care of my own problem and didn't need this. I didn't give my dad the laptop. I'd hidden it in one of my dad's broken down cars. When it became clear I wouldn't surrender my laptop, my dad didn't take it well and he beat me up. Not a great memory. I moved out to my friend's house a few farms over to finish high school. His parents were super supportive. They didn't like my dad much. I wasn't welcome back at my dad's house. On one occasion, when I saw my dad and stepmom's car gone, I snuck into the house to get my things. My stepmom had already packed up my room into neat boxes. Weirdly, I noticed that my dad's entire computer setup was on the house's back porch. He was using the internet. On my way out, I walked to the edge of the property where the wireless extender was, and I took it with me. He didn't even know about it anyway. When I finally did talk to my dad eight months later, he asked if I knew how to fix the internet. <laughs> hey dad, I've stopped gaming. You been gaming? No more gaming. Logic. And our next story. The ranger said... I got tons of stories working for state parks, and this is a classic. So we're week three into a fire ban. There's a massive forest fire going on across the state. You'd assume, of course, not tourists having their reading comprehension of someone who drinks brake clean for that tingly taste. So I work with two rangers. One's from a foreign country, the other's native. So when someone bullcraps me about what the ranger said, I know it's not going to be true. I enter the campground, both bosses are out, but they have me on fire patrol and immediately fresh smoke fills my nose. I come upon this site, RV, half butt parked, older lady, two yap dogs and husband who nurses beers. Hello campers, I'm here to inform you that we have a fire ban in place. Please put your fire out. The lady puts her dog down, no, the ranger said it was fine. I looked at her confused because both rangers are not only not okay with fires, but the native one's effing res lands on fire and he was adamant. No fires. Here's the other thing. The fire ban is based off what the county fire marshals say and they say no for Amy boys. So which ranger was it? I asked. I tend to confirm these things to be safe. He was a tall white man. There's no ranger that works here who looks like that. Also, fire ban is by county fire marshal's discretion, not ours, and the fire ban's statewide. Please put out the fire. She gets mad. Well, the ranger on the coast said, Miss, this isn't the coast. Please put the fire out. Furthermore, they're on a fire ban as well. I'm trying to save you a ticket. She tells me, buzz off, you're just a toilet scrubber. Okay, game on, biosh. Talk to the ranger who was in charge of our park, and he was on a day off. He was not happy about what was going on with this camper. So he got his uniform on, walked up. Hi, my employee asked you to put this fire out. The camper looked at him. No one came by, he said. Well, if you're lying, this is a $5,000 fine in five years jail time. On top of that, I will have to summon DNR to put this out, which is an additional $5,000 fine. She went flush, realizing I was saving her $10,000 and jail time. Come to think of it, an employee kind of came by and said something. We'll put it out right now. Boss got back in his truck, went back to the station to drop everything off, told me what happened, did the attaboy bit, and went back to his day off. Next day, we got a nasty gram from her where she wrote this very long, angry letter of how I'm lazy, stupid, fat, filthy, overpaid, and even insisted that the park stop hiring mentally disabled people. Now, I have autism, but you really wouldn't know unless you've been around me but that kind of hurt. She got banned from all parks after this. Basically, ranger runs your plates and you get a fine for trespassing. Edit, I'm not a park ranger. I was a park aide. Think characters from regular show. 
and our next story. Force me to take my vacation time when I don't want to and tell me to secure my station by freshening up my passwords before I go? Okay, boss. To start with, my boss had his moments. Sometimes he was a D who would push off me on my raises or screw with my system. Sometimes he would hook me up and make my life pleasant. This was not one of the latter. So I had plans for vacation, but my boss decided I had to take my vacation time in June instead of August because he wanted to take his vacation in August and no other time would work. I lost some money as a result, but that's my fault for planning ahead, I guess. Well, I'll start by saying my position was vital, and being gone for two weeks with nobody able to access my terminal was not ideal for the business. After forcing me to take my vacation early and losing a chunk of my deposits, he told me to change my passwords before I go for security reasons. Well, that's exactly what I did. I didn't leave notes. It's a security system. I don't leave passwords laying around. I didn't leave anything for his part-timers to work with. I did precisely as he demanded. And when I go on vacation, my work phone does not ever get turned on. I straight up left it at home. I told him on the way out the day before that if he has questions, ask him now. He said, I know what I'm doing. Apparently, while I was gone two weeks, his part-time techs ruined the server system, destroyed my work terminal, managed to screw up and lose several clients, got my account hard-locked, it was easy to fix, and all around cost my boss around 100 k in damages slash profits lost. Most of these part-timer techs were fired for the amount of property damage they did. For the life of me, I can't figure out how they ruined so much tech while I wasn't around. I still don't know how he runs a business, but he stopped giving stupid requests like that. And our last story. How a painted tree silenced the HOA. Not me, but my grandfather. He's passed now, so I'll have to tell this in his stead. About 50 years ago now, my grandparents bought their first house, a little townhouse in Gaithersburg. That particular area became a cesspool in recent times, but they bought that townhouse before it was even built. And the community there had an HOA. They were first-time homeowners, young, without a lot of money, working their butts off to get by. He was fresh out of active duty Marines, but still in the reserves. She was working two jobs as they'd been on the West Coast for four years, Obviously, not a lot of time and plenty of stress. And this home had a tree in the front yard, a small tree, given how young the complex was. And for those who don't know it, young trees in the first five or so years of life are hard to keep alive. So it was dying. The HOA did not like that, asked him a few times to please remove it or treat it or what have you. My grandmother has a horrific late-term miscarriage. The tree falls by the wayside. He gets sent off for drill for a weekend. The tree sits. He got promoted, and the tree waited, and so on. Till they got a very nasty tachygram in their mailbox demanding they do something with that tree. Fifty years ago, this was quite the insulting interaction. So my cheeky grandfather, in all his war veteran glory and rage on behalf of a stressful life, painted that damn tree gold, and the HOA never bothered him again. After all, they just said do something with the tree. They didn't specify what. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.